one of, if not the most iconic trees in the Pacific Northwest, the magnificent Western Red Cedar. These trees are magnificent beasts. I mean, they can grow up to be 60 meters tall, 6 meters wide, and live between 800 to 1,000 years old, with some of the older ones living about 1,500 to 2,000 years. When they get older, they have these really cool fluted bases, and often form these gnarly burls and buttresses that are really easy to identify from afar, along with their long, sweeping, J-shaped branches and a droopy leader up top. Now really often on older Western cedars, they form what's known as a candelabra top. And this is a really cool thing where the top of the tree will either die off or snap in a windstorm or something, and the upper branches will actually transform themselves into leaders. So you get this cool multi-tip tree that's just, you know, a really gorgeous example of life pushing on through hardships to keep on keeping on. Yeah, buddy. Now western red cedars are an incredibly shade tolerant species of trees, so they often start out in the understory as little saplings in forests dominated by Douglas fir and Sitka spruce, quickly becoming one of the more common trees in the forest ecosystem, along with other shade tolerant species like western hemlock. Now because these trees are able to photosynthesize well in low light conditions, they often thrive in wet coastal environments where there's a lot of cloud cover year round. Because they like really wet to damp soil, they've evolved with a really wide shallow root base, and because of that, they're able to suck up all the additional water they need to survive. Unfortunately though, because of climate change, we're experiencing more drought and longer, hotter, drier summers, and as a result, big old western red cedars like this are having a hard time finding the water that they need to survive. Poor little guys, you're thirsty, aren't you? Now western red cedars are really easy to identify up close just because they're so dang unique. You know, the bark on them is this really fibrous, stringy, almost hairy-like bark that peels off in long strips and ranges in a dark brownish red to gray. The wood underneath is also a really warm, rich tone of brownish red, hence the name red cedar. Now the leaves on western red cedars are also really unique because they're less needle-like and more scale-like. Up close, it's this really cool arrangement of overlapping scales, kind of a yellowish green hue that are really waxy. It almost kind of looks like a flattened braid. Now the male pollen cones on western red cedars are these tiny little orange cones that form on the end of branches that disperse a fine layer of pollen through the air in the springtime, which then fertilizes the female cones, which are these really cool upright turned uh, cones that almost kind of look like wooden flowers. A little bit of a life hack for you. The needles on a western red cedar, when crushed up, smell super good. Makes a really nice cologne. <sighs> So with their intricate crowns and candelabra tops, it's not uncommon for big western red cedars like this to host a variety of life on their upper branches. These are commonly known as epiphytes, which is a plant species that lives on another one. So in the forks between branches, mats of moss will form, which over time generate a layer of soil that allows other plant species like salal to take root, and it's not even uncommon to see, you know, things like western hemlocks growing there as well. So western red cedars, along with their cousins, yellow cedars, were commonly referred to by First Nations bands as the tree of life because there were so many different things they could do with this, you know, utilizing its wood, which splits really easily and is naturally rot resistant, to the, the bark and the fibers, which were used to make clothing and mats and all sorts of rope. They used to make all this different stuff out of it. Whew. It's a lot of stuff. Now what's even more incredible about First Nations' relationship to these trees is that before Europeans came over, very few of them were felled. The First Nations used to be able to pull planks of heartwood out of the tree without damaging it or killing it for up to centuries at a time, which basically means that they were able to harvest the forest resources without cutting it down, which when you look at the way Western society handles things nowadays, it's pretty remarkable. Some of the original settlers that came to this part of the world were absolutely taken back by the size of these ancient cedars, and these forests helped fuel the economic boom that built all of our big cities in the area from Vancouver, Seattle to Portland, which is why so many of these towns have areas referred to as stump town. In fact, some of these trees were so big that once they were cut down, people would just throw a roof on top of them and they would actually live in the stumps. It's crazy. Unfortunately though, we got a little bit carried away, and finding big ancient cedars like this one here is becoming harder and harder. In fact, less than 3% of ancient cedars that exist on the planet now exist today, and those are limited to hidden little pockets of forests all over Vancouver Island and BC, which is crazy to think, but you know, not as crazy as the fact that we're still logging these forests and destroying the ecosystems that they support. 
you think about it, each one of these trees takes well over a thousand years to reach maturity and they often grow on nurse stumps and logs of other fallen giants. So essentially these ecosystems that we're wiping out are between three and five thousand years old. To put that into perspective, that's more than twice the length of modern humanity that we could totally wipe off the face of the planet in the next decade unless we do something about it. If you want more information on what you can do to help big trees like this keep standing as well as the environments that they thrive in, I've included some links below. Sorry for getting all environmental political on you here, but you know, in order to keep these big trees from getting stumped, we've really got to get to the root of the problem. Keep these beauties around for the future generations to enjoy. Oh, gall dang, what a beauty. If you're enjoying these videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel below or just keep watching to keep learning because the more you know, the more fun you're going to have next time you're outside in nature, enjoying it. Sure is rad out here. There's just, there's so much green, you know, I've never seen this much green before. <laughs>